Hey, Mr. Hayes here. I'm going through all the AP stats or the AP stats um, notes from statsmedic.com. Um, we are starting unit five or chapter five. It's the first part of unit four um, from the College Board. College Board break puts um, from practice statistics, statistics chapters five and six together. So um, the setup here was you're going to see how well or how long you feel comfortable needing to watch somebody make free throws in this case um, until you felt comfortable about being able to say, yeah, they're probably at that percentage. I had originally recorded a video for this. Editing was a problem, so I'm going to go ahead and use the applet. That's down below as well, as well as a copy of these notes um, for you guys to use. <clears throat> I had a little bit of recording issues, so I'm going to apologize up front. So I'm going to redo this. What's going to end up happening is on this applet, let me show you where that is. Oops, wrong one. There we go. Um, you're going to go through and you're going to say how many shots you want to do. So I'm going to take a shot, and I made, missed it. No, I did make it. Okay, so I'm at 100%. So um, I'm going to write down what the percentages as they are as I go. Now, in this setup, the person's claiming to be an 80% free throw shooter. Um, but every time you take a shot, then it's going to, well, we'll see what happens. So now I'm at 2. So I'm going to do this up through 30, and then just to make sure you guys can see it. So I missed that one, so now I'm down to 67%. And then I'm down to 50%. I was going to say, this is more like how I'm really shooting. I was really shooting last night. Come on, there we go. Oops, so then we're supposed to do five. You um, can go up to 10 for this next piece of data. So that's 70. Now, instead of having to click it so many times, I can go, so I'll go up here and say I'm going to shoot five additional shots. So now if I hit shoot, it's just going to go through and show you that. So after 10 shots, I'm still shooting 67%. Etc. So you're going to continue to do this until you get all the way through this. So I'm going to go ahead and pause it, fill in the data, so you don't have to watch me go through that, and then go from there. Okay, so welcome back. So this is the graph that I have. At some point over here, you would have to say, okay, I think I'm comfortable with what's going on. Um, and so you would make a guess here. So it might have been, you might be saying, like, maybe it's here. You would say, oh, it's at 70%. You had a pretty big gap here. You start getting some kind of thing around here. So, you know, I might have said 67%. Now, they have, we go through and we sketch a graph of this. And that's basically the graph you're seeing on the screen. So I'm not going to necessarily report that. But the question then becomes, I'm going to show you what the true probability in here is. Okay, the true probability is right there. It was 70%. So at what point did it start to become predictable? So you kind of get this, oops, sorry. So there it is. Keep on hitting the wrong F key. So the question is, what point does it start to become predictable? Okay, and it's really even just over here, because notice here, I'm still under. I was hitting a bunch of 68%, but right around there was going to be the way to work. So what happens then is you get this. Okay. So I've got this true percentage kind of running through here. So the question is, what is going on in the beginning part and what's going on? So how can you make your guess more accurate? Let's start with that. Okay. Best way to make, make your guess more accurate is take more free throws. You see this a lot very early on in sports seasons. You know, there's always the baseball player who hits like three home runs on opening day and everybody's going to be like, he's on pace to hit 500 home runs this season. Yeah, do you really think that's going to happen? No. Why? Because he's got more um, at-bats to take. Okay, so the, uh, take more free throws. This is called the law of large numbers. If you like stock markets, it's the same reason why index funds work the way they do. Okay. You don't get all the volatility. By including all the different stocks, it starts to level out and go that way. Um, so right here, Mr. Hayes has a true probability of, has a 70% chance of making free throws. So interpret this probability. So what you're going to end up doing here is that, so if Mr. Hayes takes many, many free throws, about 70% of them will be made. Now, notice a couple of things here. 
I'm not saying I'm going to make 70% long term. Because remember, whatever sample you take generally can't show you what the true population is going on. But so here, if I have a 70% probability, that just says, and this is the way you're going to need to interpret this the rest of the year, at 70%, if you take a lot of samples, in this case a lot of free throws, and you keep on making many, many, many free throws, it's going to average out to be about, not average out, pardon me, about 70% of them will make it in. Okay, You're not going to say exactly 70% because you have no way of predicting that. However, you know it's going to be around 70%. And coming back here to the graph, this is where it starts averaging out. And that's where you start getting this predictable realm here. And obviously right here is very unpredictable. Okay, And again, just go back to this graph here where you start getting this. It starts bouncing around. It's kind of like walking both sides of the line, and then it starts averaging out. If you've taken calculus, this should look somewhat familiar, okay? Because this is the same idea as limits, because you're trying to narrow in on what something's going as x goes to infinity. But that's for a different course. Anyway, so thanks for stopping in today. I'll put part two up here in a second. See you soon.